It's a great privilege to be here. And I was reflecting this morning on the fact that the Watershed Alliance originated out of a conference we held about 20 years ago when we adopted our original long range goals. And so there really needed to be some kind of a group to provide technical assistance and bring all the watershed groups together and shout out to Manage Oak Green from Clearwater who had the, the energy to pull it together and, and now are just so inspired by what you're doing, Emily, and taking it up even another level. So it's great to be here. I'm gonna share my screen and give a short presentation about the estuary program. Emily asked me to provide some context that a lot of watershed groups don't really know what we do and how they fit in. So that's what I'll be doing. So first, just a quick overview of the Hudson River Estuary Program. Our mission uh, is basically conserving the estuary and its watershed. And uh, our whole program is guided by a five-year plan called an action agenda. Uh, on your screen, you'll see a picture of our draft action agenda for 2021 through 2025. Uh, that draft was issued this spring in May, and we're hoping that it will be finalized very soon. Our, our action agenda has set the, the long range goals for the next 10 years and then specific actions that we're gonna take in the next five years. So we have specific measurable outcomes for that five year period. And the action agenda covers the estuary watershed for its tidal portion from the Troy Dam down to Upper New York, New Jersey Harbor, uh, including the Verrazano Narrows, it would be our southern boundary, and the associated shorelands on both sides of the river and the estuary. Our action agenda, which guides the program, is organized around three areas of focus, the river, the watershed, and the way people use the river, recreation, education, and inspiration. Uh, within those three areas of focus, we have eight topics. Uh, and each topic that we work on really emphasizes uh, the benefit of the program and what we can do to help people. So uh, the river, that area of focus has three topics. One around fisheries, restoring and maintaining the, uh, the migratory fishes of the Hudson, as well as some of our re resident species. So that would include shad, striped bass, uh, sturgeon, resident species such as the black bass. Uh, we also, within this focus area, we work on conserving river habitats and protecting Hudson River water quality. In the watershed, we have three particular topics. One is focused on Hudson River tributaries. A second is on climate change. And a third is on conserving natural areas, such as this beautiful landscape here uh, in the area where I live in New Paltz. And the third area of focus is on how people use the river for recreation, education, and inspiration. And within that, we have two topics. One is focused on education, and the other is river access for all, which means uh, people of all abilities and people of all economic backgrounds. This year, when we announced our action agenda in draft, we also announced two overarching priorities that govern every aspect of what we do. One is more fully addressing diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. And the second is building a more climate resilient environment. So in terms of how we go about delivering our action agenda and our program, we begin with developing the science to inform our program. Everything we do is based on best knowledge at the, at the moment. We also do our work by engaging many partners. We establish a vision, much as what Emily talked about in her opening statement, uh, to clarify you know, where we are and where we want to go and engage as many partners as possible in helping us reach those goals and that achieve that vision. And then a big part of what we do is empower people to be effective stewards. So we're providing training and technical assistance. So today's conference, which is sponsored by the Estuary Program is part of that technical assistance uh, uh, offering that we do, we're trying to help our partners be more effective in delivering conservation outcomes. In terms of how we work with watershed groups, which is what Emily asked me to particularly address today, 
we provide training and guidance. Uh, we might do that through webinars. We might do that through our newsletter, uh, through websites and resources. Uh, we also offer assistance. We have a contract with the Hudson River Watershed Alliance to provide technical assistance to watershed groups. And we provide grants to support local action. Uh, coincidentally, today, Governor Kathy Hochul announced uh, $1.5 million in estuary grants for 39 projects in the Hudson Valley region. So we're really thrilled about that. And the Watershed Alliance, you'll be happy to know, is one of those grant recipients. The new action agenda, which we released, released in draft in May, uh, has a variety of planned water quality, water related priorities. Our long range targets are for 2030 and then our specific actions are for the next five years. Again, we're hoping the action agenda will be released soon, but the ideas that were contained in the draft remain uh, part of what we expect will be the final action agenda. So I'll just give you an overview of sampling of some of those. So we haven't done an uh, updated monitoring or characterization of the Hudson for over a decade. And so we're planning to uh, do that extensive monitoring beginning this coming summer. Uh, we're also continuing to be focused on the pollution that comes from combined sewer overflows and sanitary sewer overflows. Uh, this has been increasing, if anything, with, the, with rainfall. So this is really high priority. Again, on the Hudson River, investing infrastructure for priority wastewater and stormwater improvements so that those are underway. And we have a real-time monitoring system called RECOS, the Hudson River Environmental Conditions Observing System, and we're going to continue to support that. On tributaries, uh, we're continuing our work to help communities and watershed groups protect their water resources. We're continuing to assess stream segments and initiate plans for impacted segments that ties in directly with what you heard in the earlier presentations today. And we're gonna continue our work on planting uh, trees along streams for conservation of riparian areas. Um, since the program began in 2007, we have over 35 miles of trees for TRIBS projects that we have planted and we're gonna continue that. Uh, we're also building on our past successes with assessing culverts and dams to determine where we have broken habitat connections and where we also have flood vulnerabilities. So we have assessed over 50% of the watershed to date and we're aiming for 75% with this upcoming action agenda. You can see a lot of what we're doing now is building on our past proje projects and successes. Uh, we want to conserve buffer lands around streams and reservoirs for source water protection. So you heard about the drinking water program. We are a partner with Division of Water in that and we'll be helping them out with this. Uh, our approach to carrying out the action agenda is again, to focus on conserving the estuary ecosystem, creating a clear benefit for people and building informed local stewardship to complement DEC's regulatory programs. One of the ways that we think about what we do is developing a project pipeline where we start with assessments and inventories, identifying what you have, prioritizing what needs to be done, and then planning, protecting, and managing through, for example, through management plans or watershed plans. Everything we do is uh, organized around collaboration with partners. Uh, we, we collaborate on science, on grants, technical assistance, and local stewardship. And we have uh, very robust resources available on the web uh, that can pr provide help, including our database of dams and culverts, which is on a partner website at Cornell University, uh, our natural resources mapper on the DEC website, DEC's monitoring data also available on the web, and a variety of resource summaries that we may help produce for specific municipalities or watershed groups. So that's a quick overview of the estuary program, how we're organized and what we do. And at this point, Emily, I would like to um, turn it over for questions. Uh, this contact information is how you can get in touch with me. And our RiverNet newsletter provides terrific information about funding, assistance and program progress. So I hope you will all, this, this PowerPoint will be posted to the 
Watershed Alliance Conference website. And uh, so you can get those links from Emily at the um, conclusion of the conference. So you don't have to memorize them right now. So we'll turn it over for questions. Great, thank you so much, Fran, for your talk. You covered a lot of ground in a short period of time. I'm very impressed. Um, so if anyone has any questions for Fran, uh, please put them into the chat. While we're waiting for those to come in, I'll just say how uh, excited we are about the funding announcement today. Really looking forward to working with the SJ program and, and all of the partners. There's some really great planning projects that will be included uh, as part of the most re recent funding announcement. Um, okay, here's a question. Uh, what specific technical resources exist for um, watershed management planning help? So we have a variety of, of resources available. Um, some of it you saw today. So there are handbooks available from not only from DEC, but also from Department of State. Our website uh, provides a lot of resources. Uh, the Watershed Alliance is our go-to location if people want to learn more about watershed planning. And our staff are available at all times to help out. So we can really help in so many different ways. And, uh, you know, if you want to get a start, just uh, email me or Scott Cuppet is the head of our team who manages the uh, both the Hudson River water quality and the tributary management programs of the estuary program. So you can get in touch with me or with Scott. Great. Or Emily. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, do estuary grants apply to lakes that might be connected to the river through a tributary? In general, not. Uh, we, uh, we have limited funds available. We have had to, you know, think about how we manage our resources. In general, we've been supporting stream management programs, but not lake management programs. That, doesn't mean it couldn't change or that a compelling case could be made, but in general, it focuses on streams and rivers. Great. Can you share some highlights of programs and projects that the estuary program has funded? Um, and there was also a question about posting the newest projects in the chat, but Laura Heedy covered that. Thank you, Laura, uh, for making sure we had access to that. Um, but looking backward, any particular projects that um, were particularly successful that were highlights? So we offer grants in a number of categories. Uh, we'll provide grants for access to the Hudson River, improving access for people of all abilities, for storm, storm resiliency. We provide access in our education category for projects that would create river-based curriculum or help environmental education centers to offer exhibits and programs. Uh, we have a very focused uh, uh, grant category on stream restoration for product for um, aquatic connectivity. So dam removals and culvert right sizing. And then uh, our last category, which was announced today are the estuary stewardship grants. And um, those would include stewardship of streams. So for example, our watershed management plan, a plan to drink to protect the watershed of a drinking water source. Um, uh, the grant that we have gave to the Watershed Alliance today is to do land use training so that people who are working locally understand New York State land use law and how that can be applied to help uh, implement a watershed plan. So our estuary grants are advertised every year uh, on the web and uh, we typically release them in April, announce them, you know, four to six months later. And the grant categories might change ever so slightly from year to year, but in general, we're offering the same categories of grants every year. And you can look at our website to see what we have funded in the past. And that's a good gauge of what we might be likely to fund in the future. Great, thank you. Can you speak to the funding available for accessible recreation facilities on the river? Yeah, so that again is through our estuary grant program, likely to be announced next spring, uh, or the grant, the request for proposals will be announced next spring. Generally, they are, applications are due to us at the end of June, and then we review them over the summer and announce them in the fall. 
So those grants, all of our grants, with the exception of the ones for dam removals and culverts, are limited to fifty thousand dollars, and uh, require a fifteen percent match, local match, which could be in-kind services. And uh, so uh, we, in our request for proposals, we always outline what our priority projects are, and we also include our scoring criteria. So you can say, "Well, I have an idea for a project," and you can actually look at our scoring criteria and, and get a sense of whether it might score well or not. You know, the point systems, the tiering systems are all laid out in the request for applications. And uh, as I said, you can look at past applications to get a sense of, of how it's been in the past because it, we only do minor tweaking from year to year. So we, for the access projects, they are entirely focused on the Hudson River shoreline at this time. Uh, within the resources we have available, we're not able to do access on tributaries, although I think Scott would be a strong advocate for us to expand in that area. We're not able to at this time. Uh, and we do prioritize two things. One would be flood resiliency for parks because many Hudson River parks are in the floodplain, are likely to be inundated either with coastal storms or sea level rise, and many of them are vulnerable and need uh, some additional uh, protection. And then the second one is access for people of all abilities and all uh, economic uh, circumstances. And so that would emphasize projects that either provide greater DEIJ benefit or that might uh, make a, a site uh, handicapped accessible, for example. 